realise. Yeah. No. Excellent. Wait a moment or so. Get, so get some viewers. glasses as I can't actually see through them. <laughs> Get a nice little dusty glare from the camera. Well, hello everybody and welcome to our Friday afternoon live stream. Thank you so much for joining us today, especially those of you who are really busy preparing for Mother's Day on Sunday. I'm sure time is very crucial at the moment and in short supply. So thank you for taking time out to come and join us this afternoon. So today we're going to say it with flowers, literally. We're going to um, create uh, a letter using echivera, eucalyptus, possibly some moss, um, and you can use it for um, spelling out uh, corporate letters or corporate words, or just a message that you want to, to give to somebody. So give us a shout out all of those viewers who are there today, uh, and, and we'll say hi to you. We're using today um, Gypsophila. This particular Gypsophila is um, Snowball. It's one of the large headed varieties really really good as you can see there's 25 stems there it is an extra grade um, and you can see why it's an extra grade loads and loads of breaks per stem let me get one stem out whoops there you go you can see how good value how how it represents really good value for money so got lots of breaks that you can use on there using a little five centimeter echivera now these are cut echiveras and as you can see from the box there i don't know if laws can yeah. you can see that can you yeah. yet as you can see um, they actually come in all different um, color range you normally get about five of each color this one is actually sold as a five centimeter diameter but you have to be a little bit lenient with the size because as you can see that five centimeter diameter compared to that is quite different. So you do get different sizes within the box. I'm gonna wire some of those up. And not the easiest thing to wire. Some people do use a, um, a wooden cocktail stick and just push that up the stem and then use that to secure. I'm actually gonna use a wire today. I've got a, a plastic backed letter here that I've, re I've pre-soaked. So, and obviously you've gone with the L for Laura. <laughs> well, I we knew that was the we case possibly steps. thought L, Laura, maybe <laughs> love or something like that. <laughs> lady, there you go, <laughs> L for lady. I'm so, zoom in I've um, cut a sharp edge to the end of the wire there, so it's easy to push into the echivera. And push it till you feel it go goes home. There we go. Now, when the echiveras arrive, they usually have bubble wrap like this on top to save the movement in transit. Okay, I'm just going to wire a few more of these. And while I go ahead, please don't forget to ask us some questions. Um, we're more than willing to try and answer them as best we can. Let us know what you're up to today and let us know what the weather's like where you are. We've got gorgeous sunshine here today, albeit a little bit cold. A bit of frost this morning. So. With the um, Echeverius Debs, with, I, I know maybe with the wiring, with the arrangement that we're doing is slightly 
and you don't need to secure the epidurals as much. Mm -hmm. So if you were say doing a bouquet, would you have an extra? Yes. So if I show you what I would do, if I was putting this into a bridal bouquet, to be honest with you, I would probably, oh, and you saw me pinch off some little of the bottom pieces of the plant. Don't throw those away, because you can see where that cut end is. If you pop that into some soil, they will actually grow. So don't throw those away. Almost like the seeds, really. Absolutely. Right, so if I was going to put this into a bridal bouquet, I would first of all do a support wire up the centre. And you can see that's come directly out through the centre. Just do a tiny little hook and hook that back down into the plant. And just for added security, I would do a cross wire across the stem, like so. Bring that all together and then tape it. And that's really secure. Are you taping it with parafilm? Parafilm, yep. I haven't actually got any parafilm on my desk at the moment to, to show you. Um, but yeah, literally just cover the binding point, uh, not binding point, the wiring point with parafilm, and then you're all ready to go for that in a bouquet. And as you can see, it's really nice and sturdy. Do the earthquake test, that's not coming off. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to wire a few more. I'm actually going to wire oh, one of my very helpful colleagues who will not appear on screen but she is in the background so say hi to Shana she's she's our, my colleague here there you, go. you can hear her she's in the background today let's say she's just bought me some parafilm so you literally just bind around the stem just to cover up your mechanics really and just to make it look that little bit more appealing it also helps to secure any of the moisture in the stem as well uh, that's so much neater once it's parafilmed. I'm not going to bother about taping these with parafilm because they are literally going into a wet oasis, so it's not necessary. Our viewers are very quiet today, Laura. We do. I just do a shout out for Charlie, who's um, back again. She does watch all of our videos, so she says, Good afternoon, ladies. It's a lovely and sunny day in Sussex. Love watching you every week. Oh, thanks, Charlie. It's nice to have your company this afternoon. Right, so this one's being a bit tricky. Here we go. It's better. Now, I don't always hook the wire over to secure. It does depend on the variety of echeveria that I'm using. Some of them need it, some of them don't. Some of them are quite sturdy on their own account. Is that because they're just slightly heavier? Yeah, or? slightly heavier and... and <laughs> So this type of echeveria that's very loose and very open is a, is a lot more fragile than one, say, like, like this, for example, as you can appreciate. So something like this leaves a little bit more care and attention when it's wired. Um, so I would hook wire that one just to give it a little bit of extra security. Something like this, despite the fact that it's really heavy, it's actually quite sturdy, so it doesn't need quite so much attention. Okay, so I'm going to add some more in. What you will also find is, with the echeveras, they come on this rather funky piece of foam matting here that's got little dips in it. If you leave the echeveras on there, if you've got any left over, because you do have to buy them in quite a reasonably large quantity, to be honest. I think these ones came in, what's it, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. This one came in 50. So you don't necessarily always need to use 50. But what you can do, leave them on the foam backing, keep them a little bit moist, somewhere nice and bright, and you will find that they will actually root into that foam. And then, oh, you, really? can, then you can plant them. Oh, fabulous. So, yeah, so don't, don't feel concerned about buying a large quantity that you think you might have to throw away because actually they will grow so you don't don't have to throw them no they work great as presents as well don't they you can just buy lots of plants obviously. they do and buy on bulk <laughs> um we've done uh, several weddings this year where they've they've used the planted ones which incidentally are available on our website as well these are actually cut 
but we do sell the plants as well um, and we've actually used plants um, in weddings this year well last year actually now <laughs> as um, favours so each place setting I've had a little tiny echeveria in a little silver galvanised bucket so they make a, a nice living um, favour rather than chocolates and they'll last a long time absolutely low maintenance for what we <laughs> it's, we don't get commission on selling a career. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing a nice little mix of our little eckies as we call them here. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, I've got a few wired up there. So what have we got there? We've got two, four, six, eight. So two, four, six, eight. Probably do two more. Doing a trying to get a nice cross section of them so you can see all the different varieties. We've got Valerie who says, Would you wire hellebores so they will last long? What type of hellebore? Should we go for winter bells? Winter bells, no, it's not necessary to wire winter bells, they do have a natural, um, a cascade, natural sort of cascading bell shape to the flower. Um, sometimes they can be a bit unpredictable to be fair um, they, 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 they do sometimes droop quite quickly but it's just a case of conditioning like you would any other cut flower um, it's not absolutely necessary to wire them if you were using the Christmas is it Christmas gift the, the single the, the traditional hellebore which is like your Christmas rose um, then if you're putting it in a wedding bouquet, I would probably wire it unless it's quite a nice long stem and it's a hand tie that's going to go into water overnight. If it's a shower bouquet, you definitely need to wire them. There we go. So there we have, I think we've got 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We've got 10 little echeveras. You can see I've tried to encompass the majority of the varieties. And now we're going to start to pop some of the gypsophila into our letter. So I'm cutting it all down into very small pieces to start with. The now, gypsophila itself, it does go quite a long way, doesn't it? It's quite hard to um, kind of get that across to some people, just purely because it's difficult to see without, to know without seeing the variety. When um, people inquire about gypsophila, they ask if it's just one stem. Now, by one stem, they're kind of meaning one break, like that, as you can see. But actually, you get several stems, as it were, per main stem. So as I was speaking about it earlier, you get lots of different breaks on it. So it is a real, you, I mean, it's such good value for money. You can understand why people use it. Because if you're filling jam jars for a wedding, Literally one stem will probably do two jam jars. So it's very, very cost effective. And still very much in vogue. Absolutely, <laughs> very popular still. Right. Um, and quite often though, it does have a connotation for having a bit of a fragrance to it, shall we say. Um, I'm not going to name any names and I'm not going to mention um, anything too awful, but we had a new description of how it smelt from a customer the other day, didn't we? Yeah. I better not, better not say any more. <laughs> but yeah, it has, it has got um, sort of connotations of smelling a bit sort of catty almost, really. Um, now, some varieties don't smell, some do. And there never seems to be any rhyme or reason as to which ones do and which ones don't, is there? No. So, um, it's that very... That particular one doesn't smell too... No, this isn't too strong. It does have a smell but it's not it's not overpowering so okay so you can see I've cut these all into much smaller pieces and now I'm just going to start popping them in to our little letter pushing them in nice and tight now these would work beautifully for a wedding if you wanted to spell out the bride and groom's names so in this case we've got an l and a u this is one we made earlier slightly different style um but yeah could be louise and <laughs> so 
Okay, as you see, I'm putting this all in nice and tightly. Louis, Laura, it's Laura Debs. <laughs> Where did Louise come from? I'll wait for you to come. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Yeah, this is. Yeah. Okay, I've not got anything yeah, unusually for that. unusually for me. I've not got anything to say about that, so I best keep quiet, really. <laughs> So when you're putting in the stem steps, are you pointing it down or across? I am pointing it down on the outsides, on the edges rather. You can see. And are you putting the stems in quite tightly together? Is I am putting them very tightly for a together. Reason, or can you do it slightly looser? You, or is you that could. Personal? You could do it looser. The only thing you need to be aware about is if you do do it looser is you could potentially get some of the oasis showing through so you get that kind of green appearance the green background um, which is not a problem but it, it doesn't look quite aesthetic quite so aesthetically pleasing if you can manage to cover up all of your oasis what are you making deb someone's asking <laughs> I'm doing a letter. I'm doing a letter L, which I'm going to make with gypsophila and some of our little echeveras. <laughs> Same with flowers, obviously. Absolutely. <laughs> so also, um, while we're thinking about say it with flowers. Yeah, so for many, from history does dictate um, that several different varieties or all different varieties of flowers do have a special meaning to each one. Now there is difference in opinion on what what meanings are, are applicable in the UK compared to the US um, because the same flower will have two different meanings but as, as a general rule of thumb uh, the language of flowers is is widely wild widely considered sort of like the flower arranger's bible almost that you you know so for example the language of flowers yeah absolutely it? completely the language of flowers so it's very difficult to pinpoint um exactly what meaning equates to what variety of flower for example roses depending on the color a rose has a different meaning for each colour. Mm. For example, a red rose would represent passion or love, a pink rose represents perfect happiness, um, great sweetness, that kind of thing. So it's very difficult to, to be precise. Um, it's also the same with like carnations, isn't it? We're going to have a think about that for next year, but yeah. we were, carnations is very similar in the sense of roses, they have different Colours, each colour has different a different meaning so so hard I mean, you, you can go on and on i mean herbs as well for example they have have special meanings for different herbs for example as i've mentioned before um, rosemary represents remembrance so you often get asked to include a little bit of rosemary in a bridal bouquet um, or a buttonhole just to remember somebody within the family that maybe has passed away and can't be with them on that day I mean, other uh, a classic example. I'm using it today. Means purity of heart or innocence. So, so perfect, really, for a wedding. <laughs> um, chrysanthemums, a really popular flower, uh, represents joy, optimism, and some varieties of chrysanthemum rep represent perfection. So, who would have thought that from the humble chrysanthemum? <laughs> um, <clears throat> daffodils, which we've obviously covered before, because we had our, oh, our flower of the month coming up, sorry. <laughs> it's <an> April, <laughs> Sorry, I, I jumped into May then. <clears throat> so coming up for April, our flower of the month, the daffodil and narcissi, that uh, represents new beginnings, so perfect for, for spring. What else can I think about? Oh, delphinium. Delphinium. Now, delphinium is one of my absolute favourite flowers, um, and that represents fun and big-heartedness. So maybe that's why I like it. <laughs> um, Gladioli is again a very popular flower. Gladioli, um, strength of character and generosity. Um, now the iris, that's an interesting one. Iris represents wisdom or faith or hope. So we, we often get asked to use irises in funeral work. So to 
to actually use it to create hope as well and faith. I think it's quite appropriate, really. Absolutely. Just going back to what you're doing, Debs, with the echeveria and how you're placing it in, yep. you have to put the root into like the oasis or the tip of the stem into the oasis to ensure that it's still getting some moisture. Yeah, I mean, I, I have on both occasions here, they are both in oasis. So, yeah, ideally that would be the best thing to do. I mean, if you're making something like this up for a wedding um, and you want to do it sort of for some time in advance, really, then, yes, you would definitely need to put the stems into the wet oasis just so that they can continue drinking um, until the actual day of the event. So... And for the echeverias, do they only drink through the the base, or can yeah. they drink? Can you spray them? You to, can, to you can spray, moisture? you can spray them. They don't, they um, like all. I mean, obviously, they need light. Um, they need light and moisture to to create um, um, to to keep living, you know. Um, but but no, they they don't specifically drink through the heads like say a um, hydrangea wood or um, a um, violet wood um, if you do spray onto the heads the water will filter down to the root anyway so you're not gonna it's not gonna be detrimental no. to spray but it's yeah. not absolutely essential yeah they just they do like to have their their drink though just uh, like any of us really absolutely <laughs> coffee or gin maybe yeah. <laughs> well, we've actually gone off that a bit just lately. We had started to get ourselves a bit of a reputation for our Friday night gin, yeah. haven't we? But no. Well, we had it second last week, didn't we? Well, we didn't have it, but we had it. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. <laughs> now I'm folding the ends of the wires up slightly before I put them into the oasis. Now the reason why I do that, I'll just show you. So you can imagine my hand is the oasis. If you've literally just got a wire and it goes into the oasis, if you catch that wire, it's going to come out really easily. If you put a little hook on the end and then you put it in the oasis, if you catch it, it's not going to come out quite so readily. So that's why I do that. Okay, so I've used literally... Now, did I have one or two stems? I have one stem. One stem. So I've used one stem... And that's created probably, would you say, almost a third mm -hmm. of the letter. I mean, this is an L, so it's not going to take quite as much um, product as maybe uh, an M or a D would do. <laughs> can't think of my... Can't, can't, or an S, yeah, or anything really other than an L. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't had I my think coffee yet. Two stems, actually. I think I might have done. Yeah, yeah because I've got another one out to show. Like, yeah, yeah absolutely. So two Getting stems. So theoretically, two, four, six. I mean, potentially just eight stems to create this letter. So again, really cost effective. If you wondered what all the silence is about, I think I'm getting the mickey taken out of me from my colleagues in the workroom here. <laughs> yeah, we have we have a an in-house audience today, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I'm surprised I haven't had a bit more barracking from the corner, to be honest. <laughs> Right, so again, just cutting the stems really short and popping them all in. It's a little bit time consuming, this, this style of arrangement. When would you say it'd be oh. good to say make it up this well, with fresh flour? I was saying earlier, um, if you are going to do it in advance, then, then obviously do make sure that the echeveria stems are actually into the wet oasis. I would say you could probably do this three, four days before the wedding and mm. store it somewhere nice and cool. You can see on our left, I believe, um, you see that beautiful U that we've made up. We actually made that one up a week ago. Oh, longer than that. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah, no, I reckon it's probably getting on. A month ago and it still looks lovely. 
the only thing that probably we would need to replace on that is actually the um, the, grass. the lily grass. But, but the moss ridiculous. and the eckies are looking really happy. They are, aren't they? They are, very much so. So something like that where you don't have to attend to it so much, like fresh flowers, you would obviously have to consider a bit more. But if you're just using moss using the moss and the echeveras so that's fresh moss that was used but you could also use preserved moss so like reindeer moss absolutely or the um there's an indian moss or that looks very much like like that and it's preserved and it lasts really well and it the, the lovely thing about the indian moss <coughs> excuse me is if you are using it on a letter is you can always cut it out like sheets and then fold it over the letter and then pin it in. Oh, okay. Really, really easy to work with. And just doing that, would you use moss in pins or could you use the stub wire pins and make your own? Could do either. Hair pins. I probably would use mossing pins just simply because it's quicker and I'm lazy <laughs> <laughs> and stronger, yeah. Uh, but no, you could use either, either or, it wouldn't matter. So now I'm coming to the um, little corner here. So I'm going to be a little bit more defined in going around the edge. Our um, viewers are very quiet again today. Yeah. No, no questions. Maybe concentration. I'm not too sure, but we'd love to hear from you all. So make sure you ask any questions that you have, and also just say hello. We'd like to know who's in the audience. Yeah, I know Charlie's there, but don't hear anyone else. Tell actually. Hi, Michaela. <laughs> <coughs> and tell us what you're making up for Mother's Day. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry, I do apologise. See, I haven't had any coffee, that's the problem. <laughs> tell us what you're making up for Mother's Day. Um, well, um, if you haven't got anything for Mother's Day, now's the time to sort yeah, it out. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. We've had a, lot, a few last minutes, haven't we? We certainly have. So you can see how... The bottom part of the L is coming along. And I've just um, placed the um, echeveras in a sort of, oh, it's, that's not really random, it's actually quite a balanced positioning on those. So, just popping some more in. And uh, we've um, been having quite a lovely time of it here this week with all of the mystery boxes that have been going out yeah. all of us can't wait to see what are in them we've mm -hmm. uh, and we've had some really lovely feedback haven't we of what people yeah. have been been making with them some yeah, fantastic designs fantastic designs we'd love to see what you guys make so whether it be a mystery box or even just wholesale really absolutely absolutely we love to see what you do and what you create with with the flowers that you buy. All the stems are so different in how, how much they have on them. Like that stem they just are. surprises so much. It's huge, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, I I must prefer, I must admit I prefer to work with the larger headed varieties of gypsophila. I always think they're a bit more romantic, a bit more floaty, a bit more mm. open. Yeah. Um, the smaller headed ones they, they have their place, obviously, um, but they're a bit more, they are more robust, but they're a little bit more dense, um, a bit, and not quite so white. Yeah. Because of the surface area of flower head, and because you've got quite a decent surface area of white flower here, the overall impression is that it's a very white gypsophila. Whereas when you use the smaller headed varieties, because they're so dense, you see a lot more of the greenery um, of the stem, so it actually tends to look a little bit more ivory in its colour tone, I would say. Would you say though, when you create, say, in, into a butterfly, it's slightly a neater look to it? If you if use a smaller a one. smaller, yeah. Yeah, it is neater. Um, it's got more of a sh shape than fluffy. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah, no, I'd say. That's your personal preference really, isn't it? Absolutely it is, yeah. Pop another one of these in here. Oops. You can see how we're gradually coming up the main length of the L. Cut some more pieces of gyps off. 
Um, Jip is often also called, quite often we get asked for baby's breath, don't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> baby's breath. Um, and the, sorry? Is it called anything else? I was just trying to think. Um, we get various, mm. we get various, um, various ways of saying gypsophila, yeah. gypsophilia, gypsophilia, yeah. and yeah. You know, so. Mm. When you're putting it into the oasis, you're almost creating, say, like a butterfly, so you're clustering it all together. I, I am, yes. Is Would that be easier than to put one by one in? It fills up quicker. <laughs> and it's a lot, lot easier to handle as well. Here. And some more pieces here. Right. Right, don't don't forget also um to check out our YouTube channel um, and our Facebook page. We have so many tips and hints and uh, how-to guides and inspirational ideas on there. So please do visit that. Um, and uh, we're always open to suggestions on things that people want us to demonstrate, aren't we, Laura? Absolutely. I think one of our most popular was our... Um, Garland work, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Table garlands. And I think they continue to be really. Yeah. It's such a popular way for weddings and events just because of the. Yeah, really. It's just slightly changing how people are presenting on tables. Just Absolutely. A bit more. And when, when you have a long sort of trestle table, it works really well. Otherwise, you've got to add so many arrangements all the way down the length of the table. It can become quite costly, so by putting a garland all the way along, um, and also a lot of people tend to go for a, a mezze style or a, a, a sort of a, a taster style um, buffet, well not buffet, but having platters mm. brought to the table. So by having a garland along the table, you can have these nice wooden stands and put the, the dishes of food on top. It works really well and it's so social as well just as, as trends change really as we go along absolutely they always come back though don't they they really do yep they really do yeah what is it they say the old saying there's nothing new under the sun <laughs> <laughs> so getting towards the end of this one now could you for instance do say like roses um to absolutely create? you could yeah you could use rose any flower really I mean, if, if you are doing something for a wedding, um, you could bring one of the varieties of flowers that the bride has in her bouquet into the design. Or if you are doing something corporate, for example, you could potentially use, um, if, if, if the logo has a particular colour in it, you could use a colour um, to match the logo. Um, just make it that little bit more appropriate for what for what you're creating um, yeah it's uh, and obviously colors very much blend um, or, or, or are very much foremost in people's thoughts where weddings are concerned so sometimes it's it you're presented with a color that's actually quite difficult to replicate in flowers so uh, for example turquoise that's always a very difficult color to get anything fresh in so you could create something like this and then perhaps put, instead of the natural grass, you could put perhaps some um, turquoise sprayed bear grass or something in just mm. to bring your colour scheme through. Right, so there, are, there are always ways of bringing colours into whatever you create, even if you do think, oh my goodness, how am I going to get that colour? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Especially things like blue blue flowers, they're so so popular for weddings, but there's actually not that many varieties, are there? Not in true blue, there isn't. No. <laughs> Sorry. It's just how your ships are really cool on there. It's being friendly. <laughs> actually, in all seriousness, that is one of the big issues with gypsophila. 
when it's especially if you buy the extra grade it comes wrapped really really tightly in white paper my suggestion would be with that is to cut and condition it and leave it in the paper when it first arrives so it's it's um the stems are a bit more turgid and it's rehydrated then when you're ready to use it remove the paper turn the stems upside down so you've got a bunch in right so this this is what i mean okay so it loves itself it loves sticking to itself so if you turn the bunch upside down like so and then just twist it the whole bunch like you're like in a spiral form then the stems will spread out and it'll be easier to separate if you don't do that and you try and pull them apart you're going to get the equivalent of snow on your floor all the heads are just going to go everywhere so yeah just be a bit and also is it careful. best to be slightly i know you're see, we're seeing you kind of trying to pull them apart is it best to be kind of patient with it so you don't want to be too rough no just gently gently shake it so that the flowers or um, the heads kind of move in a different direction and then hopefully you can separate it a bit easier i don't know otherwise you are going to end up with a premature snowfall in your kitchen or wherever you're unwrapping it <laughs> and it is it best when you're you are conditioning to keep it in the wrapper or to um take it out of the wrapper and let the air kind of circulate i would What's best i would support it in the wrapper immediately after arrival uh, when you condition it first off um, just just helps to support the heads a little bit keeps them in that upright position while they're drinking um, and then once it's had sort of six hours or so drink then you can remove the wrapping yeah don't leave it wrapped up for too long a period of time especially if it happens to be in a humid or hot or warm environment because the moisture that's contained within that paper is not it's not got anywhere to go so it's actually going to damp it off very quickly so yeah remove the the paper as soon as it's had sufficient time to condition Last and minute. is that the case for quite a lot of flowers? So say like garden roses or say standard roses from Colombia, is that the case? Definitely, yep. Um, the Colombian garden roses are quite a unique variety in the respect that they're quite soft. They don't have the same sort of shelf life that your generic florist rose would. And they do need a little bit more care and attention. So definitely when they arrive, leave them wrapped in the cardboard papers just till they're fully hydrated, so sort of six hours or so, then remove them. Now, they do open up quite quickly. Uh, they only take sort of a day or two to open up. So I, I would, for a wedding on Saturday, I would take those out of the wrapper, possibly the day before, or even late the night previous to that, so the Thursday evening. Um, they do do open incredibly quickly but then that's it's kind of the beauty of why you have them really because they are that big blousy sort of garden style rose and you do want them fully developed there's no point in having them in bud form because mm. you don't get the yeah. full beauty of them but once they are fully developed and open they don't have a very long shelf life but they do have the most amazing fragrance yes <laughs> they have got their perks indeed they have Right, just put that last little piece in. Right, I think we're nearly there. Just pop that piece of gypsum off the back. And just clear away some of my rubbish here. And there we have our little L, our little Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Just one thing to ask, Debs, um, before we finish. Mm -hmm. um, because we've soaked the oasis in mm -hmm. water, mm -hmm. do you have to be quite careful, for instance, if you are doing it on a wedding and maybe you have a cloth on the table, would you have to be careful of the water spilling out? Okay, so so because I've made it straight, because I've made it now, you can see you're going to get drippage. But if you make it three or four days before, 
the echeveria and the gypsophila will have drunk the majority of the moisture up so you shouldn't get too much drippage okay. so i actually would recommend doing something like this a couple of days before yeah if not then yeah you're definitely going to need to put some kind of cellophane or something down to stop um to stop it from damaging any any nice wooden tables or anything <laughs> like that perfect okay well thank you so much for joining us today i hope you've enjoyed our um our little demonstration on say it with flowers <laughs> don't forget to hit that button from there like love and share us with your friends and and obviously flower lovers <laughs> anybody who loves flowers really uh, and i look forward to seeing you next week i think we've got lily info next week haven't yeah, we yeah educational lilies uh, which is very appropriate for easter coming up so uh, please join us next friday have a fantastic mother's day treat <coughs> excuse me treat your mums to something really special this weekend because being a mum is not an easy job so have a lovely time enjoy and we'll see you next week thank you <coughs>